Welcome back. Still working on Le Chatelier's principle, and we're just going to take a bunch of systems here and stress them. I'll try to do this a little more compactly. Consider the following equilibrium system with complicated weird ions in it. It's endothermic because the heat's on the left. If this system were heated from some external source, so we're heating it, we're adding heat. That's our stress. The system will react by trying to consume heat, so it will use up all the left side stuff, and it'll produce more right side stuff. What would happen to the color? Well, we're losing left side, so we're losing pink color, and we're producing more blue. So the color, if it was pink, it should shift from pink towards blue. Consider the following equilibrium. Nitrogen. Okay, so they're, make, they're making ammonia again here. Which way will the system shift if we decrease the size of the vessel? This system has four moles of gas on the left, only two on the right. If you reduce the size of the vessel, like you're crushing the container and crushing the gas inside it, the system will go to its smaller side because that's what crushing does. You're forcing things to get smaller. So it will shift to the right, you'll get more ammonia. And B, if we increase the size of the vessel, the exact opposite. If you relax the pressure on something and let it expand, it will stretch out and go towards its bigger side. So larger vessel, the system will go left where there's four moles of gas instead of two. Again, remember, we're only counting gases when we do this. Solids and liquids basically don't matter when you're looking at a volume change. Which way will the system shift if we add krypton gas to the vessel, changing the pressure, or raising the pressure? Pressure changes don't actually affect what an equilibrium system does. It kind of feels like they should to me, I've always thought, but a pressure change won't do anything. And the reason they say krypton gas is because that's a noble gas, meaning it won't react with any of these things. So this is not a trick where this will react with nitrogen and pull it out of the system or anything. The only thing this does is raise the pressure, so the answer is shouldn't do anything. And Okay, nitrogen and oxygen react to form nitrogen monoxide. What would happen to this system were in a container whose volume was increased? If you count gases in here, we have one mole of nitrogen and one of oxygen, that's two moles. We have two moles of nitrogen monoxide on this side. Equal moles of gas mean the system is volume insensitive. So you can make the container bigger or smaller all you want, and the system won't even notice. No effect. How does a catalyst affect a system? Have you memorized this yet? What does a catalyst do to a system? Nothing, except you get to your the same equilibrium faster. How does a catalyst affect a system that's not at equilibrium yet? you get to the equilibrium faster. They're kind of hammering that into you. It's almost the only catalyst question we can ask you, so it's pretty likely to come up on exams, hint, hint.